everyone. Thanks for joining us. Um, this is the counselor, and um, the counselor is the platform where we help people, guide people to stay married, and then to get married and stay married. This evening, we're going to be having a discussion, and then we're going to be discussing on something quite important, something that um, has been going on right now in our society. It's everywhere. And it's quite important that we discuss it here on this platform of the council. And then what is this thing we're talking about? It's God's take on divorce. Um, we know that divorce is um, a legal dissolution or termination of a marriage, you know, when you when make it legal of marriage. And then so many people have been going on and off divorce these days. It's more like, you know, drinking water. It's more like something that people are just, you know, used to right now. You know, at the moment, almost every day, you know, there's always one pe one person fighting for divorce or the other. And so that is why it's quite important for us to know, okay, what exactly is God's take on this divorce? It has been discovered really that 50% um, of marriages, you know, of married couples end up being divorced. Why do they get divorced? Here with me this evening is Mrs. Omolara Adedeji. We're going to be discussing this topic together and she's going to be shedding some light from God's perspective and from what God will have us know as she be becomes a blessing to us this evening on God's take on divorce. You're welcome, Ma. Thank you for Thank joining you us this evening. Thank, Thank you, you Ma. All right, so why divorce, really? We want to know why do people, you know, why do people have this issue of divorce year in, year out, and almost every day? Okay, um, I'll, I'll, start, I'll start by saying this. Like you rightly mentioned, that divorce is a legal separation that takes place in marriage, termination of a marriage legally. That's the summary of what divorce means. Okay. And um, we realized that, you know, starting with the institution of marriage itself, we look at the institution of marriage. Marriage is the coming together of a man and a woman agreeing to stay together legally to be married to raise a family. Now, what happens most of the time is when people, because you're talking about two individuals from two different backgrounds, mm -hmm. you're talking about two individuals from different perspectives different exposures, different experiences in life, and they're not coming together in a union. So it's like you're having to bond or to merge two rough edges. There will always be clashes in marriage, but you know, many people would want to take the easy way out because the truth, in the true sense of it, and for every young person listening, marriage is hard work. For you to take that bold step of getting married, you have to be committed to the hard work that has to do it's with it. It's not like a step of faith. Exactly. You have to be ready. Mm -hmm. You have to tell yourself. You have to believe in the institution. Mm -hmm. Believe in yourself mm -hmm. that you are capable and you are able, able. to handle the challenges mm -hmm. that come along yeah. with it. So you realize that the, the institution of marriage itself, it, it, it produces a lot of hardworking people. Mm -hmm. And some people want to opt out because they are not ready for the hard work. Okay. Some people feel this thing, I'm not cut out for it. Mm -hmm. And people take the easy way, the easy way out. So it's not like divorce is the easy way out. Yes, let me opt out of it. Now for many people, because the truth is in, in, in sincerity we've, we've handled cases and seen cases mm -hmm. that Sometimes the other party is not really at fault in that sense, but the, the, the person the person is in the union with is not ready to continue. So th there are so many issues that arise in my marriage is, is dynamic mm -hmm. as as the individuals that that that, yeah. cons that that consist of the marriage. So you realize that the different cases that lead to divorce is also as dynamic and peculiar as the individuals in it. So the, the divorce is really people saying, I'm no longer interested in this. I don't want to bond with this person anymore. I am tired of these struggles. I'm tired of this hard work. I'm not ready to work on this marriage anymore. So, so, so that's, that's why we have why divorce is divorce, just yes. rampant everywhere right now. Okay, well, we, we, because we discovered really that um, 
there are so many reasons for divorce. Many people say irreconcilable differences. Many people, they put it on the fact that it's their finances. Many people say lack of communication. But as we discover that most people that get married, larger percentage is on the fact of lack of communication. Can you help us explain more? Why should lack of communication, is it like they're not talking to themselves in the home? What exactly is the issue with the lack of communication? Why, why is it an issue? You know, like we said when, when we're talking about why divorce, is it takes two individuals. Mm -hmm. And the, the life the lifeline of, of any relationship is actually communication. Mm -hmm. If you don't communicate in a relationship, even if it's just a friendship, you realize that that friendship will end. Mm -hmm. So if a friendship can end based on communication, the same thing goes for marriages. Because ma marriage, marriage is marriage entails and requires communication. It's like the life of a person is in the blood. The bloodline of, of marriage is really in communication. Because I'm coming from this um, side of life. You're coming from this side of life. How can we come together? So it's not just about them talking. It's not just about talking. And, and that's why you realize the Bible makes us understand that a man will leave his father mm. and his mother mm. explaining the concept of marriage to us. Explaining how marriage can work to us. A man will leave his father and his mother and will cleave mm. to his wife. Mm. Now, that cleaving process, it takes communication. If you don't communicate with somebody, how do you know the person to cleave to the person? So that's why communication is the lifeblood of every relationship. Mm. And it's more important in a marriage relationship because it entails you, when you're in a friendship with someone, you don't necessarily need to bond with the person. But when you are in a marriage relationship, you need necessarily to bond. Because if you don't bond, you realize that there will be frictions. You want to do your thing, I want to do my thing, that's not marriage. So it's important that communication is in place. So you are in a marriage relationship, you must communicate. You're, you must communicate 24-7, you must communicate seven days a week, you must communicate every week in the month. Wow. So this means relationships don't even end, you know, marriages don't even end immediately in divorce like that. Something must have been happening way back. Exactly, ma'am. You know, you realize that many people, if you would truly ask them, people that have filed for divorce, they have started the process before they stepped into the court. Before they even called up their lawyer, they are in, they've already separated themselves mm -hmm. from their spouse. So you will realize that there's been a separation. Now this person now feels, okay, I want to be out of this. It now becomes like a bondage. And that's person okay, I want to be out of this bondage. Let's go to court and file the divorce. So that legally I am free. So you realize every marriage that ends in divorce started with a separation. So that separation means that something has happened to the living and cleaning process mm. in that marriage. Mm. Somebody is not leaving, somebody is not cleaving. Mm. So you realize that that has brought about a separation. So mom, before you go ahead, I'd like you to really explain this living and cleaving. You know, many people still stay in homes and then they are in marriage and their relationship, they are still going back to their parents. To go and discuss some that, matters. That, that's why so I, I want you to I explain the living. Now, in explaining living and cleaving, that scripture explains it. Mm. It said a man will leave his father and, and his mother. Okay. Those are the most important people in his life. Mm. Now, that my, that part, portion did not talk about brothers and sisters because if you know it, you, can, it, do it, you can do it without, without them. But the most important people in your life, your father, and your you mother, know. you have to leave them. Talking about the fact that you have to leave your past. You are coming into a present that will lead you into your future. Mm -hmm. You need to step away from your past to be able to embrace your present. So, you, so your you don't have to go back to your past. Mm -hmm. Your past and your beginning is your mother and your father. Now you are entering another relationship. Mm -hmm. You are entering another journey. You are starting a journey that is different completely. So you have to leave. Mm -hmm. And leaving means leaving. Because that many, many times we try to excuse the way what living means. Mm -hmm. Living means living. Your thoughts, 
your thoughts must be independent. Your decisions have to be independent because you have now become a different man. And that's why most of the time I love to explain to us based on the marriage vow. When you make a vow before the priest and you say, I, so, so, and so, as the man, I take you, so, so, and so, as my beloved wife, to love, to hold, to cherish, and you see, you make all those vows before God. In the true sense of it, if you're a man or a woman of integrity, do you mean it? Because if you mean those words, then that means you're telling yourself, I am leaving my past. I want to cleave to this woman. I want to cleave to this man. No, ma no matter the situation. Do you, do, you, do, you, do you know that many people forget those words, actually? So that means we need to start reminding ourselves. Maybe yes. the men need to start reminding themselves almost every day. Yes. That you know, it, it, it's wrong. unfortunate that many people forget We don't recite it, actually. We, they recite it without yeah. understanding the meaning of, of it. it. Yeah. Because the meaning of it is what gives your marriage so Stance. It's not just you wearing a wedding band. Those vows are the are actually the covenant that you have made with your spouse. Those words are the covenant, not the ring. You can remove the ring and throw it away, but do you want to throw away your words? Do you want to be a man and a woman of integrity? It takes a woman or, or a man of integrity to keep the marriage vows. Because you have said it with your mouth. And that's why when people make excuses, okay, um, when I married him, he was rich, now he's not rich anymore, I'm opting out. When you made the marriage vow, you said, in sickness or in health, in riches or in poverty, till death do you part. Not till money do you part. Till death. So you have made a commitment that no matter what this man or this woman is going through, I have decided to stick to him. I have decided to cleave to him. I have decided to cleave to her. So it's not a matter of financial it's matter. Not a, it's not a matter. Yes. So when people want to tell me, okay, there, 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 there are irreconcilable differences. What is that word? Can you explain that word? Many times really I, I really want to ask people, what is the irreconcilable differences? What happened? Was it infidelity? What happened? What, what, what was the issue like, exactly that happened that it now becomes irreconcilable? Are they irreconcilable based on your vows? Is this, is this sickness? Is it poverty? Is it what? What is the issue exactly that you are, and you want to turn your words around and say, you know what? I'm, I'm ignoring everything I said. I'm breaking this covenant because marriage is a covenant. Marriage is a covenant. You cut a covenant with a man. You cut a covenant with a woman. You said, see, out of all the billions of women in the world, I'm sticking to you. Out of all the billions of, in, men. In the, of men in the world, I'm sticking to you this man. You have made a covenant with that man to stay with the person. And you want to ask yourself, I have made a covenant to do something. Now I am being faced with challenges. It's just like we mothers that have children. No matter the challenge your, your child you has, you can't throw your child away. Yes, can. No matter, you don't have irreconcilable difference with your, with child. your child. No matter what happens, you, you would rather go and pray. Yeah. You would rather want to give yourself over. The same covenant and bond you have with your child is the same that you have with your husband and your wife. And until women understand this, it, it, they will continue to make excuses. Well, why would you say women? Because really, that takes me to the research you know, that I made recently. And then it was found out that more women, about 69% of women, do more, you know, filing for divorce more than men. It's just about 31% of men that do that. Why is it women? Because we totally made mention of the women. Sounds like right. Yes. You know, because, like you said, your research showed that more women file in divorce. Why? Because women are feeling with people. Mm, emotional people. Men stick to their words more than women. Women can change their mind because they are more, they gravitate towards their feelings and their emotions. So when they feel they don't love this man anymore, when they feel, you know what, what are you, the goosebumps and all the <laughs> things I used to have, I don't, I, I don't have it anymore. anymore. When they get down to the real business of marriage, the women use their feelings. I say they don't want to do anymore. I say they don't want to do anymore. Because women naturally are emotional. 
That's why a woman cries easily than a man. The man wants to know why he's crying, but the woman, whether she knows the reason or not, she just feels like crying. Once she's feeling it, she cries. So if a woman is feeling like leaving the marriage, she leaves. But the man wants to know why. Why am I leaving this marriage? So you mean men tend to stick to their words more? Yes. If if you look at the the way men are structured and the way women are structured, you will see that the the structure and the the makeup of women gives validity to that research mm -hmm. because women are prone to changing their minds because it's 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 more of the feeling, more of the mm -hmm. emotions. You have rare cases where women are, are more choleric. Where, where they're principle based, mm -hmm. those are the kind of few women you will see that will stick to their words. But many women that are more of sanguine and melancholy, they, 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 it's based on what they feel. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, more, it's more prone that you will find women that will file in divorce than for men. The men must have a reason, they must have a base mm -hmm. for it. And, 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 and this is why I'm, I'm, I'm talking up to women, because the same kind of emotion that you weep towards your child because you have a bond with that child. If you can see it the same way in your marriage, it will help a lot. Because if, for women, if you can appeal to their emotions, they are fine. And for women, remember, love is not just about feelings. Love is commitment. If you say you love a man, if you say you, 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 you are ready to stay with this man for the rest of it, be committed. It's not about feelings. Because he used to take you out for movies when you were dating and now he's not taking you out for movies anymore. You feel he has changed and he's seen another woman. All those are feelings. If you don't have a ground basis for those things, they are not enough for you to say, you know what, I'm changing my mind about this man. In fact, I'm not doing it anymore. You have, commitment has to be in place. But really, what should women do in that situation? In situations whereby it's looking like there are so many things, so many issues, and then, you know, they feel like they should divorce. Like the issue is getting, you know, to their neck and they don't just want to go ahead anymore. What should they do? You know, one of the things I realized about hope is you have hope. When there's hope, you stay. Hope has a staying power. If you have hope in a marriage, you stay in it. Mm -hmm. When you lose hope in a marriage, that's when you, that's when you go out of it. Now, how do you build your hope in a marriage? You want to look at that man, that man you married, and you want to look at him and truly look at him objectively. Is it that bad? Because I've seen people go out of their marriage and regret it. Many times, even the woman that has a yes, you and they will marry somebody else and go out of it and yeah. wish they stayed with the first man. Please, that will bring me back to the next one. One of my research I made, and then you know, it's more like fifty percent of people from the first marriage get divorced, married couples, and then about sixty-seven percent of people that go into the second marriage still get divorced. And 73% of those are now going to the third marriage again, you know, after being divorced yes. for events. They still get divorced. And you want to ask the question, what is happening? Was it the partner that was wrong? Or was oh, something yes. wrong with the person? Because you have to examine yourself. Before you say, you know what, this person is bad. You know in my language, you used to say this thing, this uh, stick is bad in the fire you remove it. This, this one is bad. Uh -huh. When you watch your cooking, get, get ready. Done. When did it get done? Yeah. So you want to examine. Look at that man very well. You don't have to that bad. It. So you don't really have to remove the stick. You don't have to remove the stick. They, you know, there are some sticks that are feeble that can still be strong. Mm. It, it, it mm. takes somebody believing in it. It takes somebody grooming it. It takes somebody saying, you know what, no matter how you are looking right now, my own dream and my own desire is for you to be like this. I'm going to pray about it. I'm going to, I'm going to work at it. I'm going to make sure that you become the best man. That's coming with being the helpmate as yes, a woman. It, yes, it becomes with being an helpmate. It, it becomes with you being hopeful. But I don't want us to talk too much about the women. What about the men? It's the same thing for the men because you still have a large percentage of men fighting for divorce yes, yes. for different reasons and flimsy reasons that it were. Some will even tell you that their wives are not looking pretty. <laughs> Spend money on her, take her to a trip abroad, and she will come back and be amazed. Mm -hmm. 
you, you feel your wife is fat and you want to go for a thin lady, why not run with her every morning and every evening and check whether she will not lose weight? And remember, when you married her, she was not that fat. So it was your contribution that made her fat. So you, you know, you hear, for, for men, it's about what they see. Yeah. So they think they see the woman, woman changing. And, because, and, for, and, and I still say to women, don't make your, 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 your husband lose hope about you. If he's complaining about something. Because men are visual. Women, is about what they hear. For men, it's, it's what they see. So you want to help him. Help him with what he sees. And if he complains, you say, you say, you know what, sweetie? Give me six months mm. and I'll be back. Yeah, yeah. You need to, you, because it's about what he sees. And he tells, he, he now starts, he now, he, he now, he's not hopeful for six months. Mm. He, he said, you know what? Mm. You, you can I'm be like, my wife will get there. Yeah, I'm giving her six, six months. months. <laughs> you, you just make, make him hopeful. Mm. And for men too, you are not talking to this woman. She's confused. There's no communication. There's no communication. She doesn't feel, she feels she's not fine anymore. She feels, even though she's still pretty, because you're not saying it. So talk to her. Let her have hope. But really, you know there are some men that they are not just the talking type and they don't do more of the talking to even. So this means it's a challenge for men. They should yes, try it's, it's a challenge for men because you have to understand who you're dealing with. Mm. Women, it's about what they, they hear. They love to hear words of affirmation. They want to hear that. That's why you say a woman will tell her husband, tell me I love you. Because she needs to be reassured with that word. Even though the man will tell me, ah, but you know I love you. Say it. Mm. So men help the women. Say it's it. More awful. Yeah. And for the for, for the women, show it. Show him that he's still the love of your life. He's still that one man and the one and only, the king in your palace. Let him know. Because you see, that if communication is in place, some men, many marriages won't end in divorce. And you, I realize that many women that opt out of their first marriage into the second one end up regretting in their second marriage that they could have stayed with mm, the shortcomings the and the wrongdoings of the first one. Mm. They now see that it was not that bad. But you know, you don't need to get out of it to now see that okay. it is not, yeah, that it's not that bad. So that's why it's important for you to build hope. In whatever you're doing, not just marriage, whatever you're doing, for you to stay in it, there's staying power when you're hopeful. You need to be hopeful. You need to be hopeful. Very important. And you have to learn to live, to cleave. Okay. You, you, you can't be tied to your mother's apron string. Yeah. You can't be tied to your father's apron string. That's not marriage. So what has really the, the effect of divorce and marriage? The, 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 effect, the effect of divorce is... is Even on the person's children. Exactly. It, it, affects, it affects both spouses. Mm -hmm. Whoever initiated initiated the divorce, it affect if if they had children before it happened, it affect the children. Why? Because you know, divorce is it, it, when you say die, it's <laughs> it is split. Yeah. So you have division. Yeah. You have you have divorce. You have difference. So it's a, a, anything different. So you you not have children that are raised by single parents, either the father or the mother. There's no balance. There's no, there's no, there's no contribution of, of the mother's love, the father's, the father's um, instructions. So you now see that you see a child that's skewed towards a particular, a parent. yes, parent. And you see, maybe you, you, if you notice, it, it's now common in Nigeria because now we now have so many single parents raising children. You see a a a a, a man, as it were is used to his sisters, used to his mother. He doesn't know how to face a man and to speak before men. He would rather want to speak to women rather than men so, because there's no balance. If you, you, you have a father he could speak to at home, he will gain confidence to speak with the men on the outside. So you see that there's, there's, always, there's always that gap and it affects the children. Because imagine, and even the spouse themselves, their dreams, their visions, the Bible says two is better than one, and that's the truth. That's the truth. So really, is divorce the solution? With all we've said, it looks like... <laughs> divorce is not the solution. As, as much as it lies within your path, try to see good in your spouse. You know, um, th there was a movie um, about some years back, about, um, I think, a marriage retreat, where, you know, um, there was a counselor that was counseling the couples, and he said, okay, you know what, take a shit. Take a week. Mm. Then write every bad thing this man has ever done. Then write 
all the good he has ever done, many of them came back appreciating their spouse. Oh, really? Because they realized that yeah, they you, he has really done more good yeah. than the evil that they have been capitalizing <laughs> on. And it's the same thing. And I realized that many people don't have who to talk to. They are confused. They are alone, making the decision all by themselves. They, they, they just need somebody to lean on, a correct counselor. The Bible says in the multitude of counsel, there's safety. So you realize that many people have gone out of safety because there are no counselors. And that's why this platform is here. So that you, are, you hear proper counsel. You hear proper counsel that can help you and put you in the position of safety in your marriage. Mm. Oh. Thank you so very much, ma'am. But then, I would like you to just put a word of balance for the sake of people that have been divorced and are probably watching us right now. I just want you to say something. Yes, you know, for me, I, I believe so much in a second chance. There's always a second chance in life. And God himself is a God of a second yes, chance. Yes. You're in a marriage right now, you're divorced, and you're planning to get into a marriage, or you're already in one. Please be hopeful in that marriage. Mm. What had happened that happened is your past, your present should not be like your past. And you should guard your future jealously. You should be concerned about your future. This one you are in, try as much as possible to make it work by being hopeful in it. Look at the good in that man. Build on that good. Engage the word of confession. Tell yourself, I'm going to make it in this marriage. This marriage will not break. This marriage will stand strong. Because sometimes, the words that we say make events happen in our life. The Bible says life and, tongue, life and death is in the power of the tongue. The Bible says we are going to eat of the fruit of our lips. Yes. So you need to be careful. You say, you know what, I'm just going to leave him. When you know in, in your heart that you're not ready to leave him, who says? Don't say those words it in anger. It ends up happening. So you want to be careful. You want to be very careful in how you talk, in how you make your dealings. And as a wife, submit to your husband. As the husband, love your wife. That's the key. When that is ongoing, you realize that your living and living process will be intact and your marriage will be in safety. Well, thank you so very much, Ma. Thank you so My much pleasure. for coming. And thank you for all that you have said. I believe that we have been blessed and I believe God that many of us that you know, are in one diverse situation or the other right now, I believe that we've heard words that would have uplifted us. And I believe that God is going to help our marriage. Really, basically all that we have discussed today, it's important that we live and that we cleave. Live that um, leave your parents, leave your father and your mother, and cleave to your to your to your wife as the husband. Don't go back as a wife to your home and start discussing your issues with your parents. It's not it's not wise enough. There's nothing like you can see with differences. Go into that marriage believing that everything will be fine. Go into that marriage believing that you know let's work it out. Uh, you know it's when we have just like we've we've been told. It's when we start having you know ideas and thoughts and all that that is when we, we we start conceiving things in our hearts let us believe that i'm going to work this thing out i'm going to work out this situation and then everything will be fine the power of confession don't forget please let's always have the power of confession let's pray to god let's believe god god is the you know the maker of marriage he's the one that instituted marriage in the first place he's going to help our marriage and make it good thank you once again for coming along with us this evening thank you for staying with us and i believe god to bless our homes and make our homes worthwhile and we'll live many many more years in our marriage in jesus name Amen. thank you once again for thank you once again Mark. god bless you Mark. Yes, I'm all happy to see you once again and we'll meet some other time very soon on the council. Please stay with us. I would always advertise ourselves to let you know when our next program will be. Thank you very much for staying with us once again. God bless you.